Well, we're expanding the conversation right now. We're speaking with a man who knows not just the terrain of Plateau State, but the security terrain of the nation at large, having served in the military at various levels. We're joined this morning by Brigadier General Jonathan Temlong, a former Army officer, a fellow War College Abuja uh, fellow Institute of Management uh, consultant. He joins us live uh, from Joss and Plata State. It's great to have you on the program, uh, sir. I'd, I'd like to begin from the conversation we had earlier. And, you know, we chronicled the attacks we've seen in this year. Uh, clearly not all of them, but some of the uh, major ones we have seen. And uh, we spoke to the commissioner, spoke to the chairman, tried to get a sense of why we're having these attacks. They, they gave some explanations. But So if we understand what we have on our hands, now talking Plateau State first before we talk Nigeria, why is it hard uh, to, as they say, maybe nip this in the bud or end this altogether? Well, uh, thank you very much. Let me correct. I'm not a former army officer. I'm a retired army officer, uh, um, one. Uh, thank you very thank much you. for having me. Uh, now, you see, the problem with security in Niger the Plateau State and Nigeria as a whole is that uh, there is a failure of the criminal justice system because, uh, like uh, Dan Manjang, the Honorable Commissioner alluded to, is a lot of uh, criminalities that is going on. And you find out that many of the criminals are moving about without being punished. Uh, even right within the communities, uh, if, they, if you listen to the, beat, the clip from uh, the Minister of Police Affairs, the Ngadi, and then even the Garda, yeah, there are informants in the communities about people now, what happens when you inform? They get uh, rewards for information. And they're living lives above their means, and nobody is talking about that. Uh, I think it's the whole thing that are problems that uh, deals with governance issues, uh, lack of capacity and capabilities to deal with some of these problems, the failure of the criminal justice system, and uh, the lack of of uh, will by the by the citizens themselves to rise up against criminals uh, because uh, these people live with us and there's a lack of capacity too by the citizens to be able to detect and know those who are criminals with their albums they will do and do the needful with them uh, so there is a whole need that uh, the social just the, the, the social justice uh, and the normative social uh, platforms that used to be in the, in, in, the, in the society has collapsed. And so that's why you find out that uh, the chairman was saying that people could go and stay in Banglala. Uh, there are supposed to be some uh, uh, administrative structures in that village. And you have a, a, a horde of, uh, of people who are not there. They come in and stay there and then they start perpetrating evil against the people and nobody talks about it. Uh, how do you report it? And these people do not even live off the, uh, the land. They eat, they buy food from the communities. In fact, sometimes they even buy cooked food from the communities. How can you expect about 100 people coming to attack a community uh, and then uh, they say they are in the forest? Do they farm in the forest? Do they cook in the forest? If they do, do they produce their palm oil, their salt? all the ingredients they need for their, uh, for their food? No, they come to the communities. And these are strange fellows, they don't live within the communities. Most of these villages, you know everybody that is there. Most of them are even relatives. Unfortunately, this thing is happening even in Garga, where the local government chairman comes from. My heart reaches out to them, uh, I sympathize with them, my condolence goes to them, and I pray that those who are in the hospital should be uh, be well soon, uh, get well quick, and then something should be done to rehabilitate those who have been internally displaced. But I think there are serious problems that I have to look at. Capacity, governance problems, criminal justice uh, system, and then the social uh, order. The social order has collapsed. So we must rebuild the Nigerian social order. We must build the capacity of those we elect to lead us because it is assumed that the moment you are elected as a chairman or as a governor and the rest, you have an inherent capacity to start doing what it is. 
It cannot be business as usual because governance has changed. Uh, the criminals have changed. Uh, we are living in an e-world, and yet we are just doing things as if it's normal. But governance is still the same. Uh, it cannot. We say security is everybody's business. But then you must build the capacity of the citizens to be able to detect certain indicators that are of security importance to them. And who do they give to? They and that's report. the point. Uh, that's the point I'd like that's to take huge. up next. Uh, uh -huh. with you. As that's the point I'd like to take up next. I recall in the build-up to the 2019 election, which you contested uh, for as governor uh, of the state. During the, uh, the debate, you spoke about security, getting citizens involved in security. Mm -hmm. and, and I think this is something that has been spoken about. What was your thoughts? What was your thinking then? How did you plan to approach this at that time? Uh, thank you very much, because uh, I, I was one of the architects of the Operation Rainbow that uh, they are talking about. Uh, what Rainbow, the concept was Rainbow was supposed to be uh, a rapid, uh, you know, a, a, a system of uh, acquisition of intelligence and a rapid response mechanism. Okay, but for you to do that, you must build the, the, the capacity of the citizens to know that, look, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, in those days when we were young, children were exploring the environment. And when they are involved in exploring that environment, when they see put marks of an animal that is strange in that environment, they call their elders immediately and say, look, we have seen something strange. And then, they will bring the hunters and the old men and they will say, if it is a dangerous animal like a lion or leopard, the, all of the children will be restricted back home. They will go hunting for that animal until they kill it. If not, we're all restricted home. So in the same vein, if strange people start coming to your environment, you must build the capacity of the citizens to know that, look, these people who are coming, what are they coming for? Where are they going? What is their mission? So you start tackling them, asking them questions, and building intelligence about them. And, uh, and once you do that, you'll be able to detect whether they are there for good or for bad. I, I give you an example. I used it in Adamant State. Uh, and even when I spoke on TV here in Plato, it was used, and they were able to apprehend some uh, criminals. For example, the woman who sells uh, akara and cocoa in the morning, she knows her customers. She lives in a certain area. Suddenly, a strange person comes and buys the whole of her where for that whole day, early in the morning. And that person does not live within that community. And there is no naming ceremony in that community, No, are they going for any communal farm or work in that community. The woman is happy. She goes by quickly to prepare the same akara for her normal, regular customers. She has made money but there is a security problem to that because where are they taking that money to? Why, why are they taking those Akara to? So unless you do that, people will start tracking and once they track, they find out that there was a camp or there are camps and that will lead to security actions being taken against them. So unless the citizens themselves, it's just like first aid. If you do not know how to stop bleeding or to provide it for yourself, before you call the medics, they'll come and carry dead body. So also, if the citizens do not know the basic security drills to carry out, what happens is that the dead bodies will be carried like this. They are even supposed to be a dispersion drill. If you attack a community like that, why were they not dispersed? Why were they holding into one direction that they were hitting them? These are things that cases. you must teach the community. Yeah, we, we've also had cases still talking about the communities that you have talked about. In a number of communities all over the place where we have had uh, security breaches such as this, uh, there are those who have said, like you, that we need to educate the citizens, uh, members of the communities to do the needful and all of that. But we've also heard stories of a situation where the, the members of the communities report to the authorities and they get reprisal attacks on them. Because so the, the question then will be if these people do what we are expecting them to do and that is report to the authorities and do the needful just, just as you are suggesting, they will be asking questions around their own protection when the security operatives have taken their leave. 
Well, you see, there are two things, two sides of the coin. I said, even if you report and you get reprisal attacks, there might be most within you who would have reported that these people have reported. And so in the community itself, you teach them how to look over their shoulders. But then there are bad citizens in every bad malls, in every community. Yes. So General, it definitely give you... Well, General, my, my apologies for breaking in. You've said this particular thing you've said now over and over again about there being moles in the communities, and the chairman of the local government also said the same thing, and you referenced it. But then the question would be, how do we fish out these uh, elements, these moles among the people in a way that is safe for the people? It's very easy because we know everybody in the community. It's very, very easy. We know everybody in the community. When you, when you start living a lifestyle that is above you, when you start moving suspiciously, when your movements are not known, and when you come listen to people in a way and then you disappear, in the morning you disappear, or in the night you disappear, you come back in the morning, or when there are attacks going to be held in that place, you are out of the place, it's very, very simple. You know them and you deal with them. In fact, the communities have their own ways of disciplining people. We're not saying they take laws into their hands, but they have a way of disciplining people. It has worked. It worked in areas that I know. Uh, I know when uh, we had these problems in the southern zone uh, of Plateau State, it worked because all those who are morals in those communities were rounded up. And once you round them up, there was lack of intelligence going to the people going to attack. Because it, 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 it used to be that they will, uh, they will be, uh, fall if, if that is criminality. The full and the chaps that are around was a side and the rest will form those chaps in the, the Tarok area that there are cows, new cows in their areas and how the people are coming. And then uh, people, uh, these, uh, these criminals in the Tarok land will cross over to the Wase side and go and rustle those cattle, come and sell them and share the profits. The brand now comes that the Tarot boys have brought them, not knowing that they have informants within the Fulani areas. And so when the Tarot people stood on their ground and said, no rustle cattle crosses into Tarot land again, that ended this whole situation. They didn't know have anywhere to go with them again. And they picked those who are rustling. So it's very simple to do all those things because they are the people in the community, you know the bad people. They know thieves in the community. They know those who are bad. They know those who, who, who are all in the community. It's, it's, it's very simple. So you can deal with those situations. Is there and then there's a no gap. security person operating that will want to be reported to his authority for leaking information about a criminal. Okay. The people can actually make, because if you go on to the court of public opinion, or you pass your information directly to government that do you suspect this security operative for having giving out information that you reported criminals to them and they are doing it, they will be dealt with. Nobody wants that. Nobody in uniform will, will ever want to be reported for right. doing something that is anti-government. All right, General, is there then a gap between the government, uh, the security operatives, and the people in the communities towards getting to this level that you're talking about? Because it's not just in one local government or community that these things are happening. Um, we've had stories from, you know, in Kaduna, in, of course, in Plateau State, in Benue, in Katsina, virtually everywhere. And one is wondering if there is such a gap that is making this intelligence uh, 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 strategy that you're talking about difficult for us to get to. Is there a gap? There is definitely fill? a gap. There is definitely a gap. I talked to you about capacity and capability problems. I talked to you about the deficit in the, uh, 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 the capacity of the CPP people, that they need to build their capacity and the rest. There is definitely a gap. Even the governance issues I talked to you about. A local government chairman, yes, he will tell you that uh, he's the chief security officer. Yes, he is. He has got the police. He has got the GSS and all the other security apparatus there, and he's supposed to be holding security meetings with them. He's supposed to be tasking them. He says that there are people in the forest. He's supposed to task them. So look, we understand that there are people in this forest. 
learn we want an intelligence about them who are who, where are they from what is their strength what are their capability their weapons and the rest and if the gss there can tell, tell him that look we don't have that capacity okay we will need resources if the resources are within is he gives it when people talk about command you are not the command of troops even the commander in chief doesn't command the troops physically the constitution alliance says he should delegate and that's why he has delegated to a commission officer. You do not even know how to do governance. You want to go and command troops. Before you even command troops, you have gone through the academy, gone through uh, courses and the rest, until you prove that you are worth commanding certain body of troops. You are given. So what do you want to command troops for? What you want is that you give directives based on the intelligence and the totality of information that has come to you, and you sit down with those advisors at your security meeting, and you take decisions. And those decisions that you take, you convey the same to the state. We have an STF uh, in the plateau. I don't know by how much communication has been going on between the local government chairman to feed them with some of this information, some of this that, look, there are people in this forest, who want these sort of things. If the STF do not have that capacity, they will send to Abuja, and Abuja send ISR on, on, on two of those areas to start finding out this thing, and they give them additional assets. So I think uh, there is a lot of a gap. The police uh, minister was thinking that police have drones for intelligence, information gathering. What stops scrambling those drones to those areas longest time? It means then there is a gap. It's a governance issue. There's a capacity problem. People are not using those places, those, those security agencies deployed to them properly because they don't even know how to use them. If they know how to use them, then there's a problem. If they are using them, they are not, then there's a problem. Report that this DPO is not doing what it's supposed to do. It's not having the capacity. And no DPO wants to be reported for failure to do what he's supposed to do, or a DSS operative, or even a military commander in an area for that matter. So I you think have... we need to build up our capacity. In fact, even those in, those, in fact, we start with those in governance now. We start with the governors, the cabinets, the local governments and their cabinets, traditional rulers and their cabinets. We must build this capacity. Because we want to see what is going on, it gives you, it leaves you and say, look, why are we in this state? It's a, there are governance issues, capacity problems. Mm. It's things well, general, that can be done. It's not rocket science. So you have you um, essentially, uh, you have essentially broken this down into at least five issues, capacity governance, the criminal uh, justice system, social order, and of course, including the citizens in this fight but i'll still stay with that governance and capacity angle and i'll tie this uh, to what we saw at the floor of the house of reps yesterday uh, the calling for the sack of those who have been put in charge of uh, security do you agree uh, with that call do you think that will make much difference i've always had my problem with the people in the legislature they say they are with the people they say they are representing us how many of us do they consult? You are talking about security problems. How many of us that are available here do they consult about security? Is it just going to shout on the floor that you think that's what the solution is going to be? What do you serve those service chiefs? You say serve them for what? Then you serve, in fact, somebody was saying that they should serve the uh, military or something. What? Say they will close the assembly. Let them close themselves and go home. If they don't even know what they're supposed to do there, because they are supposed to be our representatives. They are supposed to build their own capacity and talk to some of us on what to do. I tell you, in America, what brought about the changes in the security and the management of defense was a bill that was sponsored by Goldwater and Nicole. They were from the members of the, National, uh, the Congress. And it is that bill that transformed the management of defense in the U.S. till today. They sit down there as I say, sack. What is sack? They have powers of oversight over the armed forces. Have they actually known the problems that is happening in the armed forces? Have they gone around to find out, look, what I look, even understand the problems? Why are people going to attack a village and just kill people, burn down the places without even looting? <coughs> 
What are the problems? What do they want to achieve? You have to understand the problem. And if you have not even understood the problems, they don't even sit down to build their own capacity. This capacity problem is across the board. It's just not going to shout on the floor of the house and talking things that cannot even be done. You say you appropriated money. How much is a round of one seven point six two millimeter? How much is one round? But general, you would, you, you would understand. You, you would understand the, the frustration of uh, the representatives in the National Assembly, <coughs> excuse me, whether it be the Senate or the House of uh, Representatives, because as you very well know, many of the people in there are not experts at these things. So in terms of their own capacity, what would you say is lacking? And what do, would you say needs to be done at that level? Because the issues we ha we're having with insecurity, it goes all over the nation. It's not restricted to one place. The, the front pages of uh, the dailies every day are replete with all kinds of stories from all parts of the country. And these representatives are from the different parts of the nation. So in terms of their own capacity to help forestall this recurrent issue of insecurity, what would you say is lacking? Look, everything is lacking about their capacity. I'll give you an example. When the American armed forces came back from Vietnam, there were problems of rivalry, problems that look, why, 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 why was there, were there problems in the armed forces? These representatives, Goldwater and Nicole, sat down and discussed with some of the veterans. And they got to know the problems. And it is there they introduced legislation. You don't just go about say, stop this, stop this. For what? The people are doing, they are doing their best and there are limitations. They are facing a lot of limitations. You're not even appreciating what they are doing. You are demoralizing the troops, demoralizing. Look, the whole thing is that there is no empathy, even for the troops. For the security people that are being killed day in, day out, they don't seem to be showing any empathy. So it's another issue that are, came. Yeah. People, these people are coming from this thing. They must build their capacity and know that, look, they are there to make laws for the good governance of this country. Okay. Well, they one other thing that has been proposed, my, my apologies, General, because we are running out of time now. One of the issues that has been proposed over and over again, um, and again yesterday was mentioned, I think, on the floor of the House, is the issue of mercenaries. And this issue has come up so many times. It came up last year, came up sometime before, referencing the fact that the previous government had even attempted that before, and they were gaining some ground. So in terms of uh, engagement of mercenaries, as has been proposed on the floor of the House of Representatives. What are your thoughts? I think it is a failure of them even to know what they're supposed to do. Why should they talk about mercenaries? Nigeria fought a civil war from 1967 to 1970. The strength of the Nigerian army then was about 6,000 uh, 6, men. By the time we ended the war, in 30 months, we had about 240,000. World War II veterans who fought and, and, and discharged in 1945 were brought back in 1967. They were the ones they used to call Emma They were the ones who turned the tide because a lot of them had fought in the Burma jungles. And when they went to the east, they were at home with jungles. If you ask the Igbos who are on the other side, and even ask when Major Tukuman Zeku was killed, it was the arrival of the Amazasunzo because they now took cover. They never fired until it was fired for effect. It was point blank that they killed at that time. We have so many people. Look, the police today, they are struggling to recruit 10,000 people of last year, 2021. And how many policemen have died and discharged and have been incapacitated since last year? They are trying to just get 10,000 people who were supposed to have been recruited last year and trained last year, fighting between the police service commission and the police. They are still working on it to recruit 22. What we call time and space doesn't wait for you. So we will need more numbers, numbers. But one good thing that even now is that there are technology has offered you force multipliers that you can use as quickly as possible instead of men, but while you are trained more boots to put on ground, there is technology that you can deploy as a force multiplier. We must make use of technology. 
And these are things that I thought members should be thinking about. Say, so look, we need to deploy certain things and insist on some of those technologies to be deployed. Look, mm. there, there, are, there are hotspots on the Kaduna Zaria Road. Oh, sorry, Abuja, Abuja Kaduna Road. Does it mean that you cannot use technology to track all those criminals in that area? You can do it. In fact, there are places that they do. Even with cameras, you can even mount cameras, let alone doors that you can even use in those areas. Well, General, we know those areas. clearly we have a lot of work on our hands as a people, as representatives, as government, you know, those put in charge of security. But we'll have to thank you so much uh, for your insights and contribution on the program this morning. Uh, we've been speaking with Brigadier General Jonathan uh, Temlong, who is a retired army officer. By the way, as a first commander, multinational joint task force in the Northeast. Thank you for your time on the program this morning. Thank you very much. Okay, I didn't quite get that, but uh, we'll go on a break now. And uh, when we return, we'll focus on the question of leadership recruitment. What is your role as a Nigerian? What do we need to do? What are those hurdles we need to cross before 2023? That's in a moment. Stay with us.